one article in particular. It came across the Daily Mail, and it essentially said, look it, we cannot go on any more like this. So that's my first question for my guest tonight. I've invited Alex De Car- Del Carmen, Dr. Alex Del-, Del Carmen, who is currently a professor and executive director of the School of Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Strategic Studies at the Texas A&M system out there at Tarleton State University in Texas. He's with us now. He's an expert in the topic of terror as well as crime. And he's going to have some comments for us on whether or not London can go on like this with these sporadic, one-man band kind of attacks without London waking up and saying, something's got to give. Something has to change. Welcome, Dr. Del Carmen. Nice to have you on the program, and thanks for staying up late to talk to us. Hello. Thanks for having me, Terry. All right, you heard my open. Let me start first and foremost. We have a one-man band, presumably inspired by ISIS, that may be losing their caliphate over in Syria, Iraq, and Iraq, and now calling for one-man bands to use two things. If you can't get a gun through, if you can't get any other kind of a bomb through, use a knife and use a vehicle. This seems now to be standard fare, and London will continue to light their candles and continue to have the vigils and so on and so forth, but it doesn't seem like anything significantly is going to change in London, and yet they've seen the echo of this prior in, uh, in, in Brussels, certainly in Paris and elsewhere. Must right. London change its philosophy about fighting terror? I mean, I think all of us agree, you know, looking at London from the outside, that they should. Uh, there's no question that London, you know, is going to continue to suffer from these attacks, but but a couple of points that I think are important to, to think about is, number one, London is not the only city in Europe, and perhaps the only city in the world, that's going to continue to expose itself to terrorism. Um, and secondly, when it comes to London, I think that they not only need to wake up, but they also need to understand that, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome is how Einstein defined insanity. Mm-hmm. And yeah. at the end of the day, they have to realize that something's got to change. All right. So they would say, to be fair, they would say we've got cameras all over the place. There are soft targets because we have things like, you know, bridges. We have people that, you know, drive automobiles, including this terrorist. And how do you know? Um, we have things like, oh, I don't know, a knife and it got into a terrorist hand, um, and that's how they will respond. Rather than saying something like, is multiculturalism actually killing our city and by extension our country? They don't seem to ever ask that question. It's always this kind of uh, almost desperation to be so tolerant all the time, um, and 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 saying, well, we're still united in our multiculturalism, in our diversity. Um, I don't hear that. I hear, well, it's a vehicle. What do you do about that? Everybody drives vehicles. Oh, well, shrug shoulders. Oh, well, people have knives. Oh, well, it got into the hands of oh one man. Oh, well, shrug shoulders. What should London be saying to its citizens? Well, for starters, I think the fact that they have video cameras all it means is that they're going to have a really good recording of the next terrorist. Um, and, and, I mean, having video cameras does not necessarily allow for any kind of governmental agency to necessarily prevent the crime because most of the time when these crimes, when these terrorist attacks take place and the video camera is capturing it, it will require for law enforcement to be on site, to be alerted, to have a situational awareness of what's going to happen for them to even impair, uh, perhaps even stop, you know, in radical cases, uh, a terrorist from doing harm. So, I, I mean, I, I know that London is the most televised city in the world uh, with the closed caption cameras, but at the same time, at the end of the day, that doesn't give, give us any kind of assurances that they're going to protect the citizenry. The point about uh, multiculturalism 
You know, I, my, my perspective on it is is that I, I think that having a multicultural society, a diverse society, is a good thing. But at the same time, you've got to be able to do it at a pace, and you also have to be able to take measures that allow you to know who you're allowing in your country. And I think oftentimes the, the, the you know, folks in London have really looked the other way and allow for individuals that are radicals in, in various faiths, including and particularly Islamic faith, to come in and essentially take over, you know, uh, many of the ideologues and, the, and, and those minds that are easily convinced that an ideology is to be pursued over anything else. The, the danger here, Terry, is that at the end of the day, anyone is a potential terrorist. Well, you know, I hear a lot. Well, yes, I suppose anybody is, you know, maybe children, too, and the elderly. Uh, yeah, so, yes, I OK. But here's what bothers me. I hear a lot. Multiculturalism, multiculturalism. Well, that's fine if those that are coming in from other cultures in their heritage then take on British culture, you know, like Mary Poppins, you know, the Brits. What is the British culture? Same with America. Yes, we're diverse. But if you're going to come here and we allow you to come here, then you better, damn it, assimilate. And I never hear that side. It's like, well, we allow you to come here, but then there's, oh, Muslim zones. And those are no-go zones, so leave them alone. I mean, this idea that you can continue to bring over an imported culture that is very foreign to a British culture in Brit Britain's heritage and history without saying and demanding that those citizens assimilate, you got a problem. And as far as the security, Dr. Del Carmen, as far as the security goes, this man, speaking of all the cameras, got 40 yards from the prime minister. I mean, my God. So it doesn't seem like with all the cameras and all the security... And, I, you know, I, it's easy to be a backseat driver. I know I'm ranting right now. But it just seems on those two fronts, they have failed. One man band was able to do this. Right. And, and I have news for you. Uh, I think that this could also happen in the United States. Absolutely. If we don't demand assimilation better than we are doing, this tolerance and all the, you know, I mean, and, and how does assimilation come? Language, borders. Culture, as another host I know says over and over and over again, it's like London doesn't demand it. When you have no-go zones in France, when you have no-go zones in, in Paris or in, in Brussels, when you have no-go zones in London, you got a problem. Birmingham is full of those who got arrested. Now, riddle me that. Well, you know, I mean, from a, from a personal perspective, I'm, I'm a first generation immigrant from Latin America. And I can tell you that, you know, when my family came here, I was I was 12 years old. You know, there was no question that I was going to speak English, that we were going to be educated, that we were going to be in a productive, productive members of our society, that we were going to do something good uh, and that we were Americans first. And so so there's no question that the attitude of the first generation immigrant is important. You know, I think you touch on a very sensitive issue and an important one as well. But at the same time, you got to keep in mind that security means a lot more than just assimilation into a culture. And I, I think I think it really does does uh, allow us for us to be able to pause and reflect not only on, on who we are letting in a country, um, but also and their attitude, which I don't disagree with you in the sense that we have to have patriots that come to our country and people that are that see us as a land of opportunity in the case of England as a land where they can enjoy the freedoms that England that England affords them. But also but also I think what's important too is that that there there seems to be a, a general sense among people that it is okay. And this has been going on by the way, not recently, but for hundreds of years. There's always been a debate between due process and crime control. Meaning in every society, at every era in history, there's always a question of whether or not we protect our due process rights over the sense of safety that we carry. 
um, or do we are are we willing to just basically give up some of those rights, perhaps some or most of them, for the sense of being safe? I mean, look at Israel, and look what happens in Israel on a daily basis, where people don't move freely as we do in the United States to go to a mall or to go to various places. Mm. They have to undergo a great deal of security, but at the end of the day, they have one of the safest places in the world. So it's mm. always a trade-off. All right, before we go to break, do you think Westminster Bridge will now, in the future, get some kind of uh, fencing around uh, the bridge? You know, it's hard to tell whether it's going to be fencing or something else, but I imagine that they're going to fortify it a heck of a lot more than where it's been up to now. The question mm-hmm. is, is, is it vulnerable to a terrorist attack six months from now? And my answer to that is absolutely. It will continue to be. Yeah, I think so, too. Sadly, because it's not secure. I mean, it's a pedestrian mall bridge, and uh, we have a vehicle as a weapon, and that's what's being called on by ISIS. All right, let's take a quick break. Uh, Dr. Del Carmen, hang on. we got one more segment with you. Quick break, 602-260-KFYI. I'm Terry Gilberg. It's Saturday night. And now a look back at This Week in History. This week in 1945, World War II's Battle of Iwo Jima ended. About 22,000 Japanese troops were killed or captured in the fighting. More than 4,500 U.S. troops were killed. Martin Luther King Jr. led the start of a civil rights march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. This week in 1965. This week in 1972, Congress approved the Equal Rights Amendment and sent it to be ratified by the states. The amendment, though, would fail to get the required 38 states to ratify it. President Ronald Reagan Reagan proposed a space-based missile defense system called the Strategic Defense Initiative this week in 1983. Called the Star Wars program, critics said the proposal was unfeasible and questioned whether the United States would ever have the technology to make it a reality. And this week in 1998, the epic Titanic won 11 Oscars at the 70th Academy Awards, tying it with Ben-Hur for the most won by a single film. That's your look back at This Week in History. As an 18-year-old, I let my mistakes kind of take over my life. I was .5 credits away from completing high school, and I didn't do it. Ten years later, at age 28, Jackie finished her high school diploma. When I found out that I was pregnant, I know that I had to do something for myself if I wanted to make her a better person and provide a better life for her. My family never stopped pushing for me to be better because they knew what I could become and who I could become as a person. My support team is amazing. The educational director, my sister, and even my seven-year-old daughter, she's been more than the support that I could ask for. I've been given an opportunity, and I'm just thankful for it. No one gets a diploma alone. If you're thinking of finishing your high school diploma, you have help. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. That's finishyourdiploma.org. Brought to you by the Dollar General Literacy Foundation and the Ad Council. Hi, this is Willie Nelson. These days, we all know people all around us that are having some hard times, losing a job or losing a home. And we hear about how many have to move just to look for work. It's terrible to lose your home. For many, they're also losing a beloved family member, a pet, their dog. These dogs don't understand what's happening to them. Fortunately, there are wonderful people who do. The people and the rescue clubs of the American Kennel Club, the largest network of rescue groups and volunteers throughout America. And they rescue all kinds of dogs, not just purebreds. These good people and the AKC find forever homes for all kinds of breeds. And it gives people one less thing to worry about, knowing that their pets are going to a caring home. To find out more, go to akc.com. Org slash rescue groups. No matter how hard times get, remember how good dogs make us feel. They love us, rich or poor. Let's return that love by making sure they have a place to stay forever. This is Willie Nelson. Thank you, AKC. Okay, forest animals, today is a new day. Kids are coming to the forest, and it's up to us to make their visit a good one. Sparrow. Yes? Have you practiced the most popular bird songs for the year? Of course. Catchy. I like it. Okay, River. Dude. How's the temperature? It's a refreshing 52 degrees, man. Perfect for a little riverside shoeless relaxation. Ah, good. Owl, you here? Of course. Hoo-hoo, Jashkin. I am. Look, you know the drill. Sleep during the day, scare the kids at night. Perfect. I love my job. Uh, Oak Tree? What's up? Still in the same place I left you last year. That's what I like, consistency. Well, it's not like I'm going anywhere for the next couple hundred years. I know. I love it. Uh, Turtle. Turtle. He's not here yet, man. Uh, He's late every morning. You'd think he would have learned by now to leave the night before our meetings. Okay, 
Squirrel! Has anybody seen Mr. Yes, Squirrel? Yes. The forest has been preparing just for you. Visit a forest near you today. To learn more about cool things to do in the forest, visit discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. If you even think you may be in danger of foreclosure, call the National Foundation for Credit Counseling today at 866-687-6322 or visit mortgagehelpnow.org. Again, that's 866-687-6322 or visit mortgagehelpnow.org. This has been a public service from the NFCC. All right, we're back with a uh, final segment with Dr. Alex Del Carmen. He is a professor and the executive director of the School of Criminology, Criminal Justice, and Strategic Studies at uh, Tarleton State University in Texas, which is part of the Texas A&M system, and he's an expert on the topic of terrorism. He also serves as federal monitor for the United States District Court for the Eastern District of Louisiana. And in this role, he monitors on behalf of the U.S. courts the New, uh, New Orleans Police Department. He's also part of the federal monitoring uh, group in Puerto Rico. All right, back to London, England. Doctor, what would you say to this audience as you see it? And this might be sort of a sociology question or maybe an anthropology question, but what are the elements that define British, would you say? You know, I mean, I would obviously argue that discipline, uh, punctuality, uh, inclusiveness, diversity, uh, worldwide, uh, you know, a global experience are the things that come to mind. I mean, clearly history has defined them uh, over centuries as being very progressive, very disciplined, very in the arts, in, the, in literature, in, uh, in sciences. I mean, they have been the leading factor. And, and ironically, in policing, you know, the history of policing in America was largely inherited uh, by the English uh, or from the English. Uh, and one by at, extension could also say sea power and law. You know, English law, I guess what I'm getting at is if England, particularly London, continues to glorify and extol multiculturalism at the expense of what is quintessentially British, then one could say that they're losing their essence of what is traditionally British for many different cultures where people don't need to assimilate, speak your own language, have your own law, including Sharia law, and go about your business, be in your no-go zones, and kind of anything goes. And from a law in, a, a point of view, a, a law enforcement point of view, if they don't look at this as terror, although the lower third of every news story I've seen and people say it's terror, it says terror, 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 but it's almost like a one-man band crime story then what's the difference, Professor? Well, I think that when people, you know, the, the, one, the one, if you want to call it qualifier and perhaps effect that may be even be unintended by the terrorist is that when the terrorists inflict terror on any society, society members typically come together under one umbrella, one flag, and one country. Mm -hmm. And so that, that may, in fact, you remember when 9-11 took place in the United States, yes. how all of us, Republicans, Democrats, and independents, were all one. Oh, yeah. And at the end of the day, that's what's going to happen in England, I, I suspect, is that, you know, the patriots, the, 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 the British uh, that are very proud of their history are going to have to take uh, and re-examine not only, you know, what they've, what they've done in the past, you know, 200, cent, 200 years, but they're going to have to look back and say, what are we doing? What have we done in the past five or ten years to really invite this type of terror in our country? And, and I suspect that, that that conversation is taking place uh, perhaps inside Parliament. Do you think they do it better than the French? And do you think they do it better than we here in America? When you say they do it better, are you referring to law enforcement? I'm referring to what is quintessentially British. I know it's a general question. I, I think we do it better than the Brits and the French. Frankly, you know, I think that, you know, I mean, obviously, my, my answer is subjective in the sense that I'm an American. I'm very proud of being one. And I, I me too. That, you know, in the in the United States, we, we do it better than anywhere in the world. Uh, I'm very proud of the fact that I think, you know, the United States was founded from immigrants uh, from various parts of the world and, and particularly England. 
And I think that, you know, the children of those, of those mm. English that came to America are beating their ancestors in, in record time in the, in the many things that we've done in our country. But having said that, I do think the English do do things well. Uh, if you look back at the Home Office, uh, which is essentially the equivalent of the FBI, um, you look at, at the training that they receive, at the, at the, at the type of uh, investigatory approaches that they've had over the past hundred years. I mean, it's remarkable. And, and, and the British are, are noteworthy for being disciplined, punctual on various other things. The, the question really is this, right? For me at least, is you have now a terror that is growing throughout the world, a, a group of individuals that can recruit anyone that has access to a computer. Mm -hmm. and, and they themselves have members that they're not even aware of, that they're sympathizers, that, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. like what they hear on the internet and may go out and kill innocent people without even prior authorization or notice from the main group, ISIS, mm -hmm. somewhere in the world, mm -hmm. and it can inflict terror on the rest of us. Mm -hmm. That's where we are now. And as mm -hmm. the FBI director mm -hmm. has said it best, Quickly. we live in a society where we have no idea when the next terrorist attack will be. Well, it sounds like they're winning. I, I hate to say that. Will you come back and visit with us again, please, Professor? I'll be happy to do so. All right. Have a good night. We, re we appreciate you coming on. Straight ahead, Thanks. Terry's Talkers, 9 o'clock hour. Be right back.